In this week's lesson, we're working with different types of function calls. One of the types of function calls is a recursive call, a function that calls itself. I want to demonstrate what this does, and I'll explain how I do it. This is actually animating a div tag, and it's changing the width. And I want you to see that it's much faster here in actual Firefox than it is when I test it in Dreamweaver. Because if I test in Dreamweaver, which I like to do, it goes a lot slower. So you need to be careful and always test this actually in several browsers so you can set the timing right. And I'm doing several things here. We're, we have a div tag created that is growing in width one pixel at a time. And I have a function that just adds one to the width, and it keeps going after time out of three milliseconds. And then after that's done, I add, using JavaScript, a link to that. So you could create an interesting animation at the opening of a web page. I don't know that this is really good web design, because personally, I think it would get annoying to have this on every page, but it might be fun on the front page. And if you made it work fast enough, it might not be too annoying. But it's a cool thing to be able to do, and it, it, it illustrates the function calls. Let's take a look at our HTML code. But actually, I want to start with the CSS, because the CSS is critically important here. Um, I've created, I'm just setting my font family and my font size here, um, putting a little bit of padding on my anchor. Uh, text because I want it to be a little bit spaced out from everything else and not right up against the ed. And what's really important here is my div tags. And you'll notice with the hash mark that these are defining specific IDs in my HTML page. In the HTML page, I just add red div, orange div, yellow div, green div, blue div. That's all I do. There's no text in these. There's nothing in the divs. They're completely empty. They're defined in the CSS code. So they're all defined pretty much the same way. The one thing that changes is where they start, where the top is, so that they butt up right against each other. That's what I wanted them to do. Um, and they are all set with a position of relative, left of zero, height of 50, width of zero. Background color is different. I just wanted to show you you could set any background color you want. I don't actually think that this looks good. I just wanted to see you to see that you could change it. You could also set font color in here, um, but you'd want to set the, because we've done the font color and it actually changes, you'd actually want to set the anchor color in here because these are all links. But I'm hoping that you guys know enough CSS to figure that one out and fix it to make it look pretty. So I have these div tags, and what I'm doing is I'm animating them using JavaScript so that they grow and come in one at a time. And again, it's a little slower in here than it is when I'm actually working in a browser. So let's take a quick look at our JavaScript document. I have an array with my div tag names. And the, again, part of the reason that I did the different colors here, so it would be so that you'd know when I got to each one. I'm creating a variable named my object and I'm setting it as null. This is important. Null is the empty object type. You can't do it with a quote quote. That's an empty string. You have to set it as an empty object which is null. I'm setting my color which will be the current color that we're on. It will be one of these div tags and I'm setting it to zero. And current color is a number that we're going to increment to change this. So current color is a number. We'll increment it down at the bottom. My color is the current color that we're on. So the first thing that we do when we load the window, we call the init to initialize our function. So we have our function init. And you'll notice that I'm writing the functions in a different way in this exercise. Just wanted to show you that there's more than one approach to writing functions. This one is a little more similar to some of the other um, object-oriented programming languages like Java or C++, but we still have a function. It's called init. It doesn't accept any variables. In it, 
we're setting my color to my div current color. So we have the array of colors up in my div, and the current color is zero. So my color is now equal to the red div. Then that becomes my object. My object equals document get element by ID my color. So it's making the object the red div object. We're setting the width to zero. We need to set it here, otherwise we can't control it here. So we're initializing that to zero, even though it was set to zero in the other um, in the CSS, but if we take this out, it doesn't work. So if you want to be able to control it later, you have to set it here, even though I set those values in the CSS. And then we call the function move right. Move right, and this is where I set how wide my bars are going to be. So I can set these as wide or as narrow as I want. And since all of my links are identical here, and I like Dreamweaver because you can just change it, and this will change the width, and it will be the same for each one. And then I'm going to run through this code where we have my object.style.width equals, and we have to change it to an integer so we can add one to it, my object.style.width plus 1px. So it'll increase the width of the object by one pixel. And then we're using the set timeout command. It's going to call move right, which is actually the function that we're in. So a function can call itself. This is an example of a recursive function, a function that calls itself. And it has a timeout of three milliseconds. And again, it's much faster when I run this in an external browser. And you can see this wouldn't be too bad on a web page. If it only ran once and it only ran on the first page, watching those animations slide in probably would not really annoy me. It's unnecessary, but web design is not really what I'm getting into here. It's kind of a cool effect that you can have them slide in. And it will work anywhere. It's not flash. It's replicating a flash type effect but this will run on an iPhone or an Android, which is the whole point in using a combination of JavaScript, CSS, CSS, and HTML for doing animations. What I'm really trying to prove here is that you can do animations without using Flash. Okay, so what we're doing here is we'll do that until it's 150 pixels wide. At that point, we're going to do another else if. If current color is less, in my div dash length, which means we're going to keep going until we run out of divs. That makes it very easy if you were going to modify this and add more div tags. Just keep adding them, adding them to the array, and then you don't have to count. It'll count for you. So if current color is less than my div dot length, then we're going to put our variable in the current one before we change it. Then we'll increment the current color by one then we will call the init function and start it all again. You may ask, why didn't I just do this in a for loop? I will tell you that I fought with it for an hour and a half and I couldn't get it to work with a for loop. It didn't matter where I put it. When I changed it to doing this, it worked perfectly. I would have thought that by calling with a for loop here in the function that I could have just stepped through it. But what that did was it brought everything up all at once, or it just brought up the last one, depending on whether this was an if or a while. If this was a while statement, and I'll show you this, and I still find this strange. Okay, where's my syntax error? 127. Oh, here, we'll just comment that out make it alive. That's what happens if you use a while statement. I don't know why. And so we have to use the if statement here to make the animation work. I don't know why the while breaks it. So I fought with this for a little while to get it to work, but it's kind of a neat process that lets you do some animation that 
can give you some interesting visual effect. Again, I don't think I'd use it on an inside page. I think I'd only use it on a front page. That's more of a style thing because as a programmer, it's cool to be able to make this animation work. As a user of a website, if you had to wait for this to load to get to your links, you might find it really annoying. And that's a big question on whether or not you should use animation on websites or not. The reason that we're doing this though is because we're going to be building a really neat fully featured portfolio that's going to let visual effects where we're going to be animating divs with images in them come in and out of the pages. So we're building up to doing some really neat stuff for a portfolio site. A portfolio site is a meaningful place to have animation effects for having images slide off and on the screen and we have to start somewhere. So while I'm having you do an animated menu in this exercise, I also teach web design and I want you to know that I don't really think it's a good idea to do this sort of animation on a web page. There are specific instances where animations can add a lot to a web page. In the navigation, unless it's really fast, if I were really going to do it, I'd do it like this. And I'd still be hesitant and I'd still only do it on the first page. I'd make it really fast. And interestingly, this is too small because I'm using 1M instead of pixels, or 1.2M instead of pixels. Test, 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 and test in a bunch of different browsers because in notice it looks fine here. And if I changed the CSS to 1M, And I'm going to do a save all and run it in, and this time we'll run it in Safari. Works just fine. Test in lots and lots of different browsers. I cannot tell it stress enough. But you'll notice in each one of these, the font size is different because it's based on the default fonts for the browser. And I have my font sizes set large in Firefox because I use it all the time and I hate to wear my glasses when I'm on the computer. And you should do things like that to make sure you're replicating your user's computer. But that's again sort of getting off track into web design. So neat JavaScript animation. We're going to be doing more of this with some cool portfolios as we move forward.